Hey, well thanks for dropping in. Looks like we have drama in the cycling industry once again. And uh, it's just been come out officially that Cameron Jeffries has been disqualified from the National British E-Cycling Champion and he's been given a ban for six months and he's been disqualified for that first place. Now this is quite controversial because obviously we people are using the word e-doping and throwing that word around and we go well what really is e-doping and what does that mean in the cycling industry and should e-doping or disqualifications in the in the electronic world be carried over into you know the real world with real cycling because at this point in time this is what's being happened and the circumstances are really quite unusual because it's it's kind of how he obtained the piece of equipment or the software <laughs> on the program that uh, basically got him disqualified. So let's just let's just rewind the whole thing back again and look at what actually happened here. Now this is from Cameron Jeffrey's own mouth, his own words, and basically acknowledging that he has had the ban and he has been disqualified from the position and also he's had a ban for six months and that's for cycling, any e-cycling and also any real cycling. Now, what he's put forward is, is that what happened was he used a bike on Swift or in the competition called the Tron bike. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is a bit of a takeoff from the movie Tron, but according to him, what happened was is that when he first started doing Swift, he was offered by a friend a hack to get the Tron bike. So what actually happens is this somehow does the kilometers that you need or the elevation you need to get the bike. So then you actually have like a bike. And, and, and a lot of people who play games online use hacks, you know, to do all sorts of different things. Get a gun, you know, get a, a, a higher powered rifle to do whatever. I mean, hacks on games is has been around and is a common thing and people use them all the time and, and there's not a lot that's been said about these type of things, you know, as, as competitions. But now that cycling competitively is moving into the electronic world, obviously these bodies have to write laws around them and it's a bit of feeling as you go. So, you know, a lot of people are saying the ban is unfair, but is it really unfair applying these rules, you know, retrospectively and is that fair? Because apparently the rule book was written after the time that he actually did the hack and got the bike. So anyone who's been on Swift a long time and may have acquired some stuff on their game prior to the rules being used may then have to give up that equipment if they used a hack or some inappropriate method of getting that piece of equipment and not use that competitively. And then there actually is some antidotal evidence that riders or new riders who have some skill have been gifted bikes. If this is the case, then equity isn't being applied. Even if that's happening at quite a low competitive level, if the actual events are being held officially, then it is actually quite inappropriate. So these are all the questions that need to be asked. My personal view, this is just my opinion, of course, and I'm just sharing my comments and criticisms on the internet. And this is the way that I look at it. Okay, so whenever you go into a competition, maybe any competition, there's rules. And those rules at the time of you applying for that competition stand. Or they may have been written to come in at a certain time. But anyway, the rules are written a certain way, so you have to comply to them. And in this circumstance, the rules actually must have stated you can't obtain any equipment within the game, use the game as designed and as intended to get that equipment. So that's the first thing. So if that was actually written in the rules, then yes, Cameron Jeffries was inappropriate and he didn't follow the rules. And of course, that should be that should be brought up, you know, because we need to apply the rules that apply to everyone. And if someone else did it or he did it, then, you know, obviously there needs to be some sort of punishment or ruling surrounding that rule. We have a disqualification from a national championship. Now, okay, you might go, yeah, it's just riding pretend bikes. But 
in the reality is these people actually go into a room together and race and it's 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 official i mean because that's why the band's official so you need to consider this as the same as road cycling and if you did something inappropriate in road cycling you know like if you hanged on to a sticky bottle for too long or you basically got towed by a team car to get back onto the peloton these are actually rules as well but these rules are sort of applied loosely because if the person didn't get any real advantage then they may look the other way and we know this happens in UCI and we know in the UCI races that rules can be a bit rubbery the way they're applied. We know this, it just happened. I mean, you know, accepting a drink bottle within a certain distance at the end of the race and all these sorts of things. Now, to me, yes, Cameron Jeffries, he basically did break the rule, but what I find is quite amazing is the actual penalty. He got disqualified from the position and he got a six month ban in e-cycling and road cycling. Now, these are the sort of punishments you get from, you know, being, a, getting a positive reading of, of, of drugs or taking too much, you know, puffers or something like this, you know, not in the race, but it might be just a general test. And, you know, these are sorts of punishments, six months, you know, you can't compete in racing. And no, normally that sort of punishment is pretty severe. And I don't think obtaining a piece of equipment in a software game that really doesn't give you any advantage and other riders have that same piece of equipment and even allegedly some people are actually being given those pieces of equipment when they haven't achieved them is a, a little bit a little bit harsh I, I personally think I think yes he broke the rule and there should have been some consequence to that but I think the punishment was over the top as far as severity goes because if you got if you take the situation where you know you, you've got this and someone did something actually far more worse you know like just say they had modified the actual piece of equipment he was riding on just say somehow he managed to get a technician to modify the actual watt bike he was riding and it was putting out more watts so he actually went faster uh, this is actually a, has a direct impact on the race day. Now, what would they punish someone for that for? You know, is it still going to be six months or 12 months or, you know, five years or 10 years? Because that to me is a far more significant cheat than just getting a piece of equipment. Like it, like it might be in the Swift game, you've got a red bottle instead of a pink bottle, you know, and you got the red bottle because you actually used a cheat. It doesn't make your bike go any faster. So there's all these sorts of arguments. You go, yes, he shouldn't have had the red bottle because he got the red bottle inappropriately and he broke the rule. He didn't use the game as it was designed. But you need to have severity to these rules. And also, Cameron Jeffries has also had some close encounters with British Cycling in the past as well. He got fined for using a GoPro in their races because in Britain you're not allowed to use footage. You're not allowed to take footage during the races on your bikes. So, I don't know if this was part of the equation. They saw this as this was his second misdemeanor, not his first misdemeanor. So, they made the punishment far more severe. I don't know. But yeah, I'd like to hear your comments down below and hear what people think. My view, this is my view. My view is yes, he should have been found guilty and he did cheat because the rules started that. But I do believe the punishment should have been, should not have been as harsh. So, let me know down below and I'm signing off, I'll catch you later. Bye, cheerio.